So glad you are taking your time to watch the Tech Vibe Radio One Mic Stand. I got a couple cool dudes and I'm really, really excited to talk to. They were just on our Tech Vibe radio show just a few weeks ago. And I just love what they're up to because they have this kind of tagline, this mantra of making your business cool. Sounds pretty basic, but it's kind of complicated to do that in this day and age when you're a business and you're trying to stand out and be legitimate. So we have our guys here from Phantom Exposure. We have Ethan Sefchik and Corey Grimes. Guys, thanks for taking the time and zooming in with me today to talk more about what Phantom Exposure is up to. Thank you. So Ethan, I've known you for a little bit as a member of the Tech Council, and I'm always impressed with your enthusiasm, your hustle, and always trying something new. And I just got to meet Corey a few weeks ago when we were doing the radio show. And I, like I said before, I just love what you guys are up to. I mean, you guys are trying to shake up some of the traditional kind of, you know, online digital marketing that people are kind of confronted with in this day and age. Where did you get the idea to do this? What gives you the chops to do this? And how are you guys just busting this thing up different than anybody else? Um, I don't know. One day I was just, I, I've been immersed with like social media my whole life. And I felt like, it's a huge platform in today's day and age to take advantage of, especially as a business. And it's you, you search your favorite business anywhere, even if it's a small business and they're on social media, like most people are on social media. So now in today's day and age, it's not about being on it. Like before it was like, Oh, you know, you got your business on social media. You were like, you know, the big shot in the town. I'm winning. But, Look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now it's not about that anymore. It's about how you can present yourself with ads, how you can present your company and be engaging to users. And, you know, so many people are on social media. Your, your grandparents are on social media nowadays. You know what I mean? They're on Facebook. They're on whatever, you know, some, some moms and dads are even on Instagram, just posting casual stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but are they making TikTok videos? Get it I mean, I have to do that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really just about how you present yourself. And that's what, you know, we're good at. You know, we've done back end research and, you know, just front end usage. And, you know, we know how to work around the social media platform to get the most engagement for your, for your company. And that's basically Definitely. And, and, and Corey brings a really unique skill set to this because it's it's all about quality imagery, and that's what Corey's all about, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's really what's going to set someone's social campaign, their advertising apart, is having just really tight, good visuals. And so, yeah. how did you guys link up and say we're going to take you know Ethan's background and passion for this, and then married up with with all the cool stuff that Corey's bringing with it? Yeah, so um, we're just uh, Corey. Well, Corey was working with a different company and then we started that and then we, I started this and I was like, okay, ads always go along with a picture or video. Of course. It's never just words. So I reached out to Corey and we were each doing our independent thing. You know, I was helping companies on social media side of things. He was helping companies with, you know, pictures and videos. So then I asked if he wanted to work on this together. So that's how this came about. I like it, man. I like it. It's yeah. the name Phantom Exposure. I kind of like that. What was the, uh, the genesis? People always have a cool story about how they named their company. <laughs> well, Corey and I were actually just sitting together one day and we were tossing around, you know, we work with companies like we do everything social media from mainly ads, but we also can help companies, you know, kind of rebrand themselves and set themselves up to be a more engaging company. But also we were just talking about yeah. like, so naming ourselves marketing, like fan of marketing, but we didn't really like that because we are gonna be doing pictures and videos too. So we right. talk about well, media, but media just mainly means videos, marketing just means marketing. So we wanted something that kind of went hand in hand with both of those. So that's like how it. we can so, yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. No, I totally dig it. That's cool, that's cool. So Corey, tell me a little bit more about your background. I mean, yeah. photography is a tight skill these days. And I think sometimes it's often yeah. underappreciated. People just think good pictures happen and they don't. I've tried and I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah no um, i'm trying actually, to be conscious of it as well too <laughs> yeah um so actually i've been doing it for about like four or five years now okay. i went to point park for marketing actually okay but then i got um into photography in the media field because of my roommate that i'm still like best friends with um and i picked up a camera i've always liked it i've always liked photos and videos but never had a camera a professional camera so then gone for christmas and started shooting for just like myself getting better and then mm -hmm. starting to find people and work in more companies and then just grew from there oh. um that how well, me and ethan met i worked for a company a different one for a year and i did a lot of all the content for social media 
Okay. And he just, he um, met me through there. And then um, I left that job and I was doing, I've been doing freelance for a while now. And especially now there's not really jobs <laughs> with the coronavirus, but um, so then he asked me to do it, but yeah, phot- photography is very unappreciated and people think it's just like you click a button, but really it's t- goes so much more into it. I mean, it takes right. hours for editing. I mean, it's not just, you take it out of the camera, it's hours of editing to make sure the photo looks good for what they want. Um, and even just, and if they want video, obviously video is hours of shooting and hours of shooting and then hours of editing and trial and error. And I mean, people just think I really just click a button on my camera, but I mean, it's a couple thousand dollar camera and a couple thousand dollar lenses and all this stuff. I mean, it's, it goes more than just clicking a button on a camera. So, Absolutely. I mean, people don't know. I mean, obviously iPhones are good nowadays, but you can't, there's a reason they make professional cameras and stuff. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's a reason I pay $3,000 my camera um, because you're gonna you're gonna notice it and i mean editing it like i said you could change the the colors and moves to really fit with company once you know i mean um so yeah it's it's just a very fun thing i'm just a creative post creative person and i love being able to like change what i want and it's kind of like painting a picture to me when i say i mean i'm painting a picture like through digitality but it's just like my own art and and for companies obviously you kind of have to follow what they want but it's definitely a fun thing to do uh, I think it's just so cool. So, I mean, obviously, it's like we, we see just lots of bad photography when it's off being social. People are just doing screen grabs or just taking a crappy picture with their phone and thinking that's going to work. What are some of the common mistakes that people make when it comes to, you know, having the, the right visuals to go along with their their ads and their, their social campaigns? Um, I would say, this, I mean, for a, a, a trained eye, I mean, you have to see when the photo just was taken from a, um, a rim that's a camera just not edited and like it just looks very basic and not really appealing to the eye um that's definitely something but like i think just you have to be creative with it like make sure you catch the eye quick like people really have um, short attention spans i mean if it's a photo it's definitely harder because like it has to pop out good i mean like if it's a, a restaurant we're shooting for too like you want to make sure the food looks really good i mean i mean if you get a really bad picture of food i feel like it might not attract people um that's that's one of the harder things but um we've always used the example of a, a lawyer like to make a lawyer look cool i mean if you're shooting for a lawyer um definitely like you want to spice it up like have maybe things around them or change the colors and things like that um then videos too you want to start good you want to make sure things are very appealing as soon as you can like first three seconds of a video like something crazy like a good edit or something like that um but i think people just are really just bland about it i mean sometimes you want to be simple depending on what you're shooting for but People just, you could just tell the, the lack, like laziness um, that goes into it. And for me, if I'm scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, or whatever, I want something that's going to be attractive to my eye. And um, if it's not, it doesn't look good, then I'm not really going to look farther into that company. Makes sense. So Ethan, maybe walk me through the process, how you work with a client in an effort to make them cool, for lack of a better term. I mean, obviously, you're going to look at the, the, what, what their goals are, their mission, and how you're going to align that to putting together the right visuals and really creating something that's going to stand out for them. How does that work? Yeah, so we like pairing up. Like I said, we like doing the content as well as the marketing side of things for companies, but sometimes we just do you know, one or the other. But when we can do both, you know, it leads to the best results because we, like you said, we kind of like see what the company's looking for, what type of company like clothing or restaurant. And we like to do videos because people normally have three seconds on Instagram or social media platform before they lose attention. So you have three seconds to really grab their eye. And that's a way to do it. Like how often have you, you've never seen a lawyer do a, a video on Instagram. And there's so many different ways that you can do that. Like, I don't want to have a new business model here, man. I think you could have, there's a whole legal market out there that's not on Instagram. Right? Yeah. I mean, I just use that example because I'm not hating on any lawyers or anything, but those are the ones that I normally see that try to run their own ads. And it's just a picture of them like sitting in a chair, like straight up and down and just like, you have a nice tie on, right? I mean, that, <laughs> yeah, that sells yeah. it for me, huh? <laughs> but really, you've just got to, like, we try to take advantage of trends. Like TikTok's a big platform that we uh, like to use. It's just uh, like, Companies like how we talked about are on social media. A lot of companies are on TikTok yet, and that's a huge market because while TikTok right now is like, you know, a lot of like kids posting dancing videos and everything, first of all, that's still a large market that you could reach are the kids, but it'll transform over time. Like, remember when Facebook was all little kids? Like, my, like when I was like 15, like Facebook was the thing. 
and now like I haven't used Facebook in a long time. <laughs> I've used Facebook in a long time. Me either. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's really just about like taking advantage of trends and then also just being creative with the video. Because like Corey was talking about, it is a lot with the shooting and a lot with the editing, but it's also knowing how to make the video in the first place, how to make it engaging for you know, the viewer. Yeah, what about, I know a lot of folks want to try this themselves sometimes, and then they realize it's difficult and that their results suck. And so I want to encourage people to like reach out to you. Like, I mean, and people are also can have tight budgets, so they're like afraid to spend money right now. Uh, I'm sure you guys are always willing to, to talk to somebody, just see what they're trying to do, maybe come up with, with, with a good starter plan to get them going, and hopefully they can kind of grow into some, some larger uh, projects with you guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we don't have any prices listed on our website because we kind of like to tailor to the client based on what they need. Um, but a lot of it is just, you know, finding out what's going to work best for them. Like whether they're they're a small business here in, you know, Southside Pittsburgh or whether they're somebody, a bigger company looking to transform to, you know, that's not, you can really do social media for anything, even like an industrial company. Of course. So like there, there are ways to, you know, to make that company be appealing on social media. So it's just all about finding out what they need. But when people try to do stuff themselves, it's not hard to do an ad on Facebook, but it is hard to do an effective ad. Um, okay. Like, you know, like we mentioned before, you can, people go on there, start making an ad, see that they can reach 10 million people for $10. Like, wow. let me know how to do that <laughs> you can actually do that but the, the and you think that you're going to get all these results from that but that's not the case because there's 10 million people and normally you don't actually reach 10 million people but it tries to push it to that but there's so many different people from a wide range seeing your ad and you're not going to get very many conversions and as your ad performs more poorly it's going to be shown to less people so what you really want to do is you really want to get that down to a very, very, very small audience, a very targeted audience. And that way your ad starts converting and it starts like it. And there's and a lot of it, it starts so growing because the more it converts, it's going to start offering that out because 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 the, the platform seeing it as being effective. Yeah, you, know, exactly. well, you don't yeah, want to but, go for a huge group with very different interests. You want to go for smaller groups with, you know, more tailored interests towards what you're looking for as well as you can run different ad sets, which are like different demographics for one ad that, helps you like kind of see what's performing the best so there's a lot that goes into it no nah, it's, it's some awesome advice and that's why i always tell people leave it to the pros like sometimes we all know a little bit about some of this and we we, we dabble with it ourselves but i think at the end of the day we end up kind of wasting time and money when a lot of times it's so much easier to hang out with the dudes at phantom exposure and let them take care of it for it <laughs> yeah. so it's help. Absolutely. Before we wrap this thing up, any any top tips? If people are going to try it themselves first. Just, just, just a couple of absolute essentials that you must do to not completely mess it up. Uh, there's always YouTube. What's your secret sauce? <laughs> there's always YouTube. I mean, how I learned and, and still learn is YouTube. I mean, on my end, like photography, videography. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not really a secret. It's there. I mean, that's how anybody should really learn, especially nowadays. I mean, we're always on our laptop or phone, so definitely go on go on YouTube if you need a. Um, we often, it's a good, that's a good point we often forget like there is nothing you cannot learn on youtube which is pretty pretty amazing sometimes like the things you can yeah. find it's like wow someone shot a video on that yeah, exactly. <laughs> i'm glad they did because now i'm out of a jam <laughs> exactly yeah no i would just say for people not to not to post something corny you know just like say <laughs> it's all about nowadays. like it's all about what you're seeing and you know just put yourself in the viewer's shoes a lot of time you think that you know, you're trying to make yourself look good and, oh, this is a good picture of me sitting in a chair, but like, you're just, you're just like, you're just, as they're scrolling down, they just see a random guy sitting in a chair. They're going to be like, next, you know what I mean? So it's, it's all about appearance. And then there's a lot that goes into the back end too, but without, yeah. without the, the picture of the video being engaging, it's hard to run a successful ad. Absolutely. I just love the vibe you guys are bringing to this. I think it's so cool. You're spinning this up. You guys are linking up to put together phantom exposure. I really want to just recommend everyone out there. Give these guys a call if you're thinking about it. And I honestly, some people I've been talking to lately is like, now's the time to be thinking about this stuff. I mean, budgets are tight and things are a little strange and scary right now, but this is actually the perfect time to start putting your plan together to come back strong. And I think phantom exposure can help you with that. So guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. Awesome, guys.